Let's wrap up this chapter on just some essentials, on talking about color in an image as it relates to the bit depth of the image. To me, this is a very important concept to understand. We will be bringing it up again as we get into things like color and color correction. If I have an image open, which I do, this guy's just kind of staring at me, shot with the telephoto. I'm not sure if he really saw me, but he probably did. If I go up to the word image on the pull down menu and go to mode, you will notice I have an 8, 16, and 32 bit channel option. Now, this image is 16 bit. It came off of a raw image, and I processed it through the raw filter. We'll talk about that. And then the raw filter into Photoshop is 16 bits. Most images, unless you shoot raw, will probably come in as 8 bit channels. But what does that mean? How does that relate to what I'm doing in Photoshop and why should I care? Well, let's start. I won't change it. But let's start with looking at something. If we go into the channels, the channels panel that rhymes, you've got a red and a green and a blue channel. If I click on red or green or blue, the image changes. Now think of it this way. Everything on a computer is a number. It doesn't see a shade of gray. It has a number that shows a shade of gray to me. If this image were eight bits, most images are, then each one of these channels has the possibility of 256 different steps of gray from black to white. What does that mean? Each one of the steps is a percentage point of color for the channel. So I could have in this image 256 possible drops of red mixed with green mixed with blue that produce the colors that I see. That's how it all works. 8-bit images, 256 drops of ink or possible drops per color. So if you go math on me here, and you go in and you multiply 256 times 256 times 256, you get 16,777,216. It's all about the math. So each pixel in this image, and there are millions of pixels in this image, has the possibility of being any one of 16 million colors to produce an image that I see based on what we talked about in the last lesson, the resolution of the image, to produce a photograph. If I decide to take the image to 16-bit, which this one already is, what does that do? Well, number one, it would double the size of the file, okay? The file is now twice as big as it was, but each one of the channels now has the ability to divide the drops of color you can mix with the other ones to about 16,000 per channel. 16,000 per channel, which means if you multiply that number times itself, times itself, you basically get trillions, not billions, trillions of possible colors per pixel. Pretty amazing, especially since the human eye cannot even see as many as 16 million colors at any one time. You say, then why do I need something that I can't see? Think of it this way, and this will make more sense when we get into color correction. When I'm correcting this image, I'm changing the drops of color in it. If I'm working in 8-bit, I only get 256 drops of color. Actually, there's 255, but zero counts as a value. So it's 256 altogether. But when I'm working in 16-bit, I get 16,000 drops of color per color. That gives me more control when I'm minutely changing color systems to get the colors exactly where I want them to be. Now, I'll mention this again, but I'll mention it now. If you're working on an image and you're going into color correction, channels, lots of different ways we can do it. If you go up to the word image and you notice that it is actually 8 bits, change it to 16. Now, technically speaking, you're not getting any more color than what was in the image when you put it as 8 bit. It's not going to make colors where there weren't any, but the minute control you have now in color correction will help you out to change it to put it exactly into the form you want. When you get done with your color correction, you can take it back to 8 bit. So resolution of the image, very important. Color depth, the bit depth is very important also. These are just some of the essential elements we need to fully understand what's going on in Photoshop. And the more we know, the more we can control what we want to do.